guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk. And today I am going to talk about my poetry favorites for the month of April. And I have lots of quotes, mostly not so much poetry this month, but we're gonna go with it and continue to call it the poetry favorites because I think this is just an oddball month. So first and foremost, like promised in my April favorites, like my random favorites and stuff for the month, I am going to read you a Paulina Simmons or Simons. Simmons, Simons, if you know the difference, please tell me in the description so when I film the book talk, I don't sound like idiot and idiot words. But don't worry, no spoilers in this. Reaching against my fate, it's the only fucking thing I ever do. I just refuse to be defeated. And if you read the, the story, then you understand more, but if you don't, then maybe that's like, hey, you should read it. And one other one, real quick, also from the Bronze Horseman. His violin words echoed in her chest. So there's like beautiful little descriptions like that that just make me fall for this book. And what was the other one? Um, he was vivid and they were muted, I think is how it goes. That's off memory, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. It's important to keep your feelings and your self-worth in different places, because when your feelings get hurt, it shouldn't change how you view yourself. By Casey Dane. Diane, Diane, Dane. Just smooth pronunciations rolling with it. When I loved myself enough, I began leaving whatever wasn't healthy. This meant people, jobs, my own beliefs and habits anything that kept me small. My judgment called it disloyal. Now I see it as self-loving. Kim McKillen. What I'm really terrified of is leading an average, ordinary life with a regular job and an invariable routine, planned holidays, an average household, fixed responsibilities, and not doing anything different to be remembered by. And I think we all have that fear to an extent and it really reminded me so hard of why I was able to relate to Augustus Waters so much because he just wanted to be remembered. He wanted to leave his mark. And I feel like this is just another way of saying that it's it's human nature, I think, almost to just want to be immortal in one way or another, whether it's small or big. And so now I have a couple from Taryn Fisher from Mudvayne specifically, but don't worry, these don't spoil if you haven't read that. And if you haven't, why? And you should. <laughs> there is a string that connects us that is not visible to the eye. Maybe every person has more than one soul they are connected to, and all over the world, there are those invisible strings. Maybe the chances that you'll find each and every one of your soulmates is slim, but sometimes you're lucky enough to stumble across one. But I really love that because it's not just saying, you know, you have that one soulmate, which I feel is so um, common, I guess, to believe. I'm very strongly on the side that Taryn is on. And the thought that, just to say that there's one person that you can only be like romantically in, in the romantic sense of your soulmate, I feel like that's just limiting. There's going to be more than one person if you're gonna go with the theory that there, uh, what was it, 100 years ago or 1,000 years ago, that there were 500,000 souls and now there's, you know, 7 billion and that if there's only a certain amount of souls and then when we die, then they get split and then, so there's little pieces of this one soul that was, and that's the idea of soulmates. And it's just, oh, it's a really beautiful thought. And again, I've mentioned this, at least 15 times on this channel. But where I heard it was from Before Sunrise. It's a movie, it's fantastic, you need to watch it. But I just, I really like the idea that it's not just like in this romantic sense that there are other people that you are connected to, but the odds are, you know, so slim, so you only sometimes find one. And if you're lucky, you might find more than just one. And I have another quote from Taryn Fisher from Mudvayne. We are consumed with our own morality. Some people eat right and exercise to preserve their lives, and others drink and do drugs, daring fate to take theirs. And then there are the floaters, total Big Brother reference by the way. Um, the ones who try to ignore their morality altogether because they're afraid of it. And I just, I love how that's just so well explained in a way that I'm, I've had thoughts similar to that but I've just never been able to articulate it. I'm better at writing, not saying. This next one is by Charles Bukowski from Purple Glow. Isn't it funny how you can ache just from the deadly drone of existence? This next one I'm going to mispronounce the quoter's name pretty badly. I am not sure that I exist, actually. I am all the writers that I have ever read, all the people I have met, all the women that I have loved, all the cities that I have visited. Jorge Luis Bourgeois? Here it is, right here. But I just, I love that because you are affected by the people you are around or the events that have happened to you or the places that you've been. That was, again, really well articulated. People will kill you over time, and how they'll kill you is with tiny, harmless phrases like, be realistic. 
that's by Dylan Moran. I think it is so damn true. Writing is a way of talking without being interrupted. Jules Renard. Ignoring your passion is a slow suicide. Never ignore what your heart pumps for. Mold your career around your lifestyle, not your lifestyle around your career. Unknown, I don't know where that's from, but mm, it just speaks to me right there. And then from Anne Frank, because paper has more patience than people. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this and be sure to check out, like I said before, my random favorites for the month of April. And I will see you guys later next to my bookworms talk. Bye. And today I'm going to talk my poetry. Where's the about in that word?